Greetings, this is Charles Darwin, and today I'm interviewing a man who is one of the leading American figures in opposing creationism. Dr. Victor H. Hutchison is the George Lynn Cross Research Professor Emeritus at the University of Oklahoma, and he has a long and distinguished scientific career, having published about 150 papers, primarily about frogs, and supervised the work of 27 PhD and 18 master's students. He was president of the American Society of Ichthyologists and Herpetologists, and for the non-scientists watching, that's the professional society for people who study fishes, amphibians, and reptiles. He is also a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science, AAAS, uh, which is perhaps one of the leading scientific societies in the world. Colonel Hutchison served in the Medical Service Corps in the Korean War. Twelve years ago, Vic started Oklahomans for Excellence in Science Education, OESE, and you can find out more at oklascience.org. And this is an association of high school and college educators throughout the state, and its purpose was to encourage evolution, education, and to confront creationist legislation. Colonel Hutchison, Professor Hutchison, welcome to the Darwin Channel, and I've prepared some questions, but you can tell us whatever you'd like. Thank you, Charles. Okay. Um, well, I'll start. Uh, how did Oklahomans for Excellence in Science Education get started? And um, do other states have something similar? Or is this something more or less unique to Oklahoma? We got interested in this in <clears throat> 1999 when the governor of the time, Governor Keating, knowingly appointed a group of creationist teachers to the state uh, textbook committee. And they uh, then passed a, a rule to put disclaimers of, about evolution on every textbook that mentioned evolution. And that's thus challenging evolution. This was a real problem, uh, but fortunately the Attorney General of the time, uh, Attorney General Edmondson, declared that they had promulgated it improperly and it was void and so it didn't pass. But that got us interested in this and in the intervening year since 2000, uh, Oklahoma has in the legislature has had more creationist bills introduced than any other state in the nation. And we have been opposed to those ever since. Other states do have similar organizations. There are, as I last checked, 14 states that have organizations normally called Citizens for Science. Uh, Kansas had one of the first of these when they had their big debate with their state education board some years ago off and on. And they, they were very effective. And we modeled our organization somewhat after Kansas. In fact, we pretty much copied their constitution bylaws to fit our needs. Okay, so this is uh, the legislature uh, passing laws to try to regulate what? Science teaching. Okay. They want to introduce uh, creationist ideas or intelligent design ideas into science classes where they don't properly belong because they are simply not science. Okay, well then that leads to the second question. I understand that to you, uh, opposing creationism is not uh, an anti-religious crusade, but it's an essential part of science education. So how does the work of OESE contribute specifically to the quality of science education, especially in public schools? Yeah, that, that's correct. We, we are, of course, private schools can do just about anything they wish, but because of separation of church and state, public schools cannot include religion uh, in, in, in a normal way of teaching it, in, particularly in science. And since creationism is not science, uh, we don't address it. We address what is truly science and try to get teachers uh, trained properly so they can, can teach it. Uh, we do a lot of things to improve this with our, we have uh, a website which has lots of teaching resources for teachers on it and lots of other things. And we have just completed our eighth annual weekend workshop in, for teachers in how to teach evolution. And we are now branching out and we'll now also uh, look at uh, the science of climate uh, and, and the teaching of climate change. And we hope that our next workshop will be in that subject area. And so even though much of the opposition to evolution and now to uh, global climate change is religiously motivated, that's not the purpose of this organization. 
uh, to oppose the religion, but rather to promote the proper teaching. Of Absolutely, science. we are not we are not any religion. We do not address religion because it's it's simply not science. We try to address just science and and how science should be taught in the classroom. Okay. Yeah. So uh, explain uh, that is interesting because it explained how uh, Oklahoma public school teachers are both required and yet may in some cases be, by their local school boards, forbidden to teach evolution. So what's going on here and what are we yeah, doing? Yeah, this now? is a real problem and it happens not just in Oklahoma, it happens in a lot of other states. The teaching standards in Oklahoma definitely require that the principles of evolutionary biology be taught but it's not titled evolution. For political reasons, they never use the E word. Because of that lack of the E word, two national studies give Oklahoma Fs both times uh, for that. But if, we, if you look at the teaching standards, we do cover evolutionary principles, and they're there. The problem is many teachers are caught between administrators or principals and parents that do not want their children to hear anything about evolution. And this is a constant problem uh, in Oklahoma and many other states. And it is, uh, it's harming our science education. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the people who are opposed to evolution maybe don't know what it is. Absolutely they true. They don't recognize and, it. And that's partly because they never get it taught in school. We estimate that maybe 50% of schools in Oklahoma and other states don't teach evolution in biology courses. So they don't know what it is. They've never heard the principles of it. So it's just because the teachers want to keep from getting in trouble. They could do it, but it would be too They much are afraid trouble. of parents. They're afraid of even nowadays of students who challenge them in, in class. And, and so we need to really be behind students, uh, in fact, behind uh, teachers as well as students that will, you know, wish this, that evolution be covered properly. And some of them do, actually, parents and students do request that they get more evolution. That's correct. Yeah, we have some. Yeah, that's true. We have it both ways. And now some of the uh, legislative uh, acts are uh, couched in terms of critical thinking. And so I think everybody realizes it's good to get students to think critically about what they hear and what they read. Uh, so uh, what could possibly be wrong? I'm playing devil's advocate here, but what could possibly be wrong with legislation that encourages critical thinking? Absolutely nothing. The problem is that the creationists, particularly the, 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 those pressing for intelligent design creationism, uh, use that as a buzzword. They want to, the buzzwords such as let's teach the strength and, uh, strengths and weaknesses of evolution are critical thinking. Well, what they really mean there is let's attack and destroy evolution, not to really promote it at all. And those bu buzzwords are well known now, and they're being used, and those, those phrases are incorporated in the so-called Academic Freedom Acts that the Discovery Institute uh, out of Seattle, Washington, is pushing around the country. And there are now two states that have passed that Academic Freedom Act, and that's Louisiana and Tennessee. And Oklahoma came very close last this year to, to passing it, but we, we've got it rejected. Okay, so in a way, it's giving uh, a viewpoint that has no legitimate scientific evidence sort of an equal standing by opposing it to evolution. That's correct. That's and, correct. And calling yeah. it critical thinking, and sort of like they don't do this for the germ theory of disease and things our, like our, that. Or the theory of gravity, which has is probably less well supported in, in the theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it's strictly uh, aimed at evolution. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? There is a political basis for a lot of the legislation, and for better or for worse, it appears that, at least in Oklahoma and many other places, uh, it's often the Republican Party that is proposing creationism. Um, what's your take on that? It doesn't have it, to be that way? No, it doesn't, but it is, and, and that's correct. It is mostly, certainly in Oklahoma and other southern-like states, uh, Republican. Not entirely. We do have in our legislature a very few Republicans that support our aim to teach evolution and not creationism of any kind in science courses. The problem here is that a lot of this anti-evolution stems from religion, uh, particularly the more fundamental religions, not the mainstream religions. If you look at some of the mainstream religions like 
the Catholic Church, uh, United Methodist, Christian Church, and so on, they actually have formal statements saying they find no real conflict with evolution. But it's the more fun evangelical Christians uh, that find this, and I think it's because they're taught the Bible is being, in, in many cases, being in, you know, inerrant and uh, absolutely the truth. And I think that's, that's where most of this problem comes from. And I think the counter to this is to point out the real science, not the religious part, but simply to teach the science involved. And the Board and of Governors of OESC does have some clergymen. There are, there are three different clergy on our, on our board, uh, simply because we know as practical politicians in a place like Oklahoma, you are not going to get support if you attack religion in any ways. And we don't because we don't see it as, as, as a factor in this, this battle. What we see is that we must be sure that evolution and other sciences are taught this. Another interesting thing is most people that attack evolution also attack other sciences like climate change, or uh, anti-vaxxer, vaccination people, uh, all kinds of other things we see is, is really an anti-science movement, and a lot of this is based on religion. Okay, and but we we oppose it not by opposing religion, and also we try not to be political, even though often it does have a political origin. Uh, we, we try to stress the science. And that's right, and that's difficult to do because it is a political movement on on the point of those that. that that attack evolution or climate change and so on. It, it clearly is, but we try to point out the scientific facts. And it's overwhelming that in evolution, there is no debate. They say there's a controversy. Not amongst, not in science, there's not a controversy. 99% of, of scientists, and by scientists I mean research scientists such as research biologists, uh, agree that, that evolution is, is, is a, a based on real fact. Uh, but it's still very, very difficult when you've got a majority of the population that believes otherwise. And uh, you're talking about, in, in many cases in Oklahoma, we have probably 85% plus that are people of faith. And, and of that 85%, a good percentage of them are, are, are fundamental in their beliefs of, of biblical inerrancy. And that's a real problem that you have to overcome in trying to teach them the real science. But we approach it by teaching them science, not by trying to get them to stop. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we, you have to keep them totally separate. In science class, you need to talk about science, not any biblical statements. That's, that'll get you nowhere, and it's not our point. We really want science talk properly. Dr. Hutchison, I want to thank you for your many years of service. Uh, to the scientific community and in science education, and in more recent years, uh, to the promotion of evolution education in Oklahoma. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.